Hello everybody and welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 8! It is time for another Tutorial Tuesday and because we are so new to the game and so much has happened and by so new I mean we are only a few weeks into Alpha 8 and so much has changed into Alpha 8 I thought it was time to kind of go back and do a little bit of the basic stuff. So this week we're going to be talking about the Far Hailer. Now the Far Hailer is the new thing that kind of overtakes the old social tab but it doesn't just do the same job, it also kind of adds a little bit more to that old job and there's a lot of kind of new things and different things and there's a few things I didn't explain well in my last like social tab video and I think Alpha 6 that was. Uh, so we're going to go through that again and we're going to go over the Far Hailer and everything it can do and how to do everything from adding friends, joining groups, going to blueprints, uh, joining in on dungeon quests and all of that good stuff. All of the stuff you can do through the Far Hailer. So let's take a quick look at that, shall we? So the Far Hailer is brought up by pressing F just the same way that the old social slash friends tab used to be brought up. And when it comes up, not only do we get this really cool animation now where we actually have a Far Hailer at our disposal and our character kind of like fiddles around with it and plays with it as we're looking through all of the stuff that we can do on this thing, but we'll also get this actual side uh, menu pop up over here. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of tabs down the side here. And we're going to get to these one at a time. So the first one that you will get when it pops up is the Islands tab. Now, this is the way of controlling all of your own islands, all of your favorite islands, and then all of the community islands. Now, there is a lot of difference between these two. So you can have of your own islands, you can have islands that are your favorites, which will then end up in the favorite list. Now to favorite an island, all you need to do is just click the star over here, and the favorites tab for me is a really, really great way of bookmarking certain islands. So when we come back into my favorites tab, you will see that not only do I have one of my own builds, which is one that I was working on a couple of alphas ago, but I favorited it then so that I could keep going back to it really quickly and easily, but I also have a build by Onyx Eve, which is a really great build and it was also a community build. It was a build that I was actually part of helping out with. And I think it's an awesome build, so I like to have that on hand for quick and easy access. So I simply favorite that and therefore it is in that list all the time, which means I don't ever have to go looking for Onyx's profile to get back to that island. And personally, any time that you find an island that you think is really awesome or really cool, or you have a friend's island that you're helping work out uh, or work on, I would say friend uh, favorite up that island so that it ends up in this list. And you don't have to keep like scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of names to get to this person and then get to their island. So that's personally what I think the favorite stuff is best for. My islands is literally just everything that you own. So obviously you can go and buy new islands from the trader in the hub and all of those new islands pop up here. Now, I have a fair few right now because I am a kind of a hoarder of islands. I like to use the islands to buy specific materials basically. So I look at what each um, biome has in terms of colors and then I buy the things that I need so I can go through and just knock all of those out quickly and easily. That's a really good tip for somebody who's doing a really really big build. If you need lots and lots and lots of stone of a specific color, save up your knots, go and buy a secondary island. It's going to be quicker and easier in the long run to smash that thing out with demolition pickaxes than it's ever going to be to go and find that much stone in a world. Then finally we have the community tab here. Now the community tab this will list everything. This will list just every single publicly available island in Sky Saga. Now, this, like I said, that could get a bit confusing and there's going to be a lot of stuff in here and there's going to be a huge amount of islands. Thankfully though, there is a few kind of little search tabs up the top here. So this shows you kind of the most visited and most liked stuff and it's giving you time frames of today, this week, and ever. And like I said, you can do most visited and most liked. So this will kind of give you a bit of a running popularity of things, as it were. And for the most part, the community around here is really, really good. So things that are at the top of this list deserve to be there. They're there for a reason. So I would suggest 
going and every now and again when you don't really want to build and you don't really want to adventure have a look through this list and jump to people's islands and take a look around because there are some really really awesome builds out there and you can learn a lot by jumping through people's islands and just taking a look around there's lots of really cool things and you will learn so much about the game and about building just by jumping through people's islands and having a look around so i would highly recommend doing that and then yeah this tab and all of its sorting features are the best way of doing that, I would say. So that is pretty much it for the Islands tab. Now the only thing that's left in the Islands tab are the quick jump buttons down here. So the quick jump buttons are Home on the very left, the City of First Light, PvP, Build Offs, and Dungeons. Now these things are a very, very quick way of getting into any of these things. So yeah, you literally just click on one of these and you will be teleported off to that location. And you'll be, if you click on Battle Arena and you, or you click on Build Off, you will be prompted. So if I click on Battle Arena, I'm prompted to go into either a Team Deathmatch or a Capture the Flag. So you still do have that option, even if you're using that little quick launch button down at the side there. The very last and final thing to do with the island stuff, and I almost forgot to add this in, is this is now where you allow friends to edit specific islands. So, say I was on my home island like I am right now, that's my forest home here, and I wanted somebody to come over and give me a hand to kind of knock out some trees or whatever it was I needed to do. All I need to do is I need to click this to make sure that this island is allowed to edit, and then we need to go through and actually give them permissions to edit our home own home islands. But to do that, we need to actually go down into the Friends tab, and we're going to start talking about the Friends tab right now. So the next tab down is actually called the Heroes tab. Now the Heroes tab is all about friends and other players in the game. That's why I call it the Friends tab, because it was called the Friends tab in a previous alpha version. So when you have clicked on your Heroes tab, you see this screen pop up, and you'll see at the top we've got Friends, following and followers. So friends are people that you have kind of mutually followed and they have more rights and more access to you in the game. So right now you can see that I have two friends online. I have Army Brat and Mackerel and I can join friend at current location. So all I need to do is click that button and I will be teleported to wherever they are. In this case, both of them are on their home, home islands. So I would be teleported over to their home island and I could go over and say, hi, Usually I would try and send that person a quick message just before I did that, just so I'm not interrupting anything, but that's just me. Also in here you can uh, view a player's profile, so if we pull up Army Brad's profile here, you'll see that you can see all of the medals that he currently has on his profile, also his main medal on his profile, and then what he's currently wearing and all of his current stats as well. There's also this little invite to group thing that's going to be important later when we talk about the groups tab, but uh, just for now we're just going to ignore that and move on. So you can also see some small statistics, you can then see all of this player's islands as well. I believe that when you're a friend you can see even their private islands. Yeah, so here we go, so he's got one public island and a whole bunch of private island. Um, yeah, private islands. And I can only see the private islands because we're friends. If I wasn't friends with him, I wouldn't be able to see these private islands. And of course, we can go through his photos and also have a look at his blueprints. Now, we're going to go through our own photos and blueprints further down the list. As you can see, those are down in here. And yeah, so he has got a couple of blueprints as well. So blueprints, you can actually go and visit another friend's blueprint, but you can't ever give or receive build rights in a blueprint. Only the person that owns that blueprint can actually place any blocks down. So the only reason you want to go and visit somebody's blueprint is to just check out what they're working on and see what they're up to, basically. So that is how friends work. So like I said before, friends are all about having lots of access and lots of connection between you and them in the game. Now, following and followers is more of a one-way street. So, following is people that you have followed but haven't followed you back. So, because I haven't followed you back, the only thing you can do is check out their information and you can see when they are actually online. But that's it. You don't have uh, any access to build rights or they, and you can't give them build rights. And you also can't jump to their current location. 
But like I said before, you can still see what it is they're wearing and how they've set their profile up, all of their photos and things. And then we'll have a quick check in here as well for the islands and see if we can actually see any of the private islands. Okay, so we can see the private islands, but we can't jump to any of the private islands. So you can only go to people's islands if those islands are published, if you're not friends with them. So even when you are following them, you can't jump to any island that isn't published of theirs. Now, followers are kind of sort of similar, except for they are one way the other way. So they follow you, but you can still see if they're online, you can still visit their profile, but you haven't followed them back means they're not meaning they're not a full friend and you still can't give them build rights they can't give you build rights that type of thing it's very restricted as a kind of one-way connection between two people so for now we're just going to take a quick skip over groups and we're going to go straight into the photos so photos are literally every photo you've ever taken in sky saga now there are certain times in sky saga where you have to take photos so these are your blueprints so this is the kind of first four up here. Sometimes you can need to take them for questing, which is what these two are. And then there's more blueprints. I take a lot of photos in blueprints. And there is also in build offs as well. So in through here, you will see a whole bunch of your photos. And these photos carry all the way back through from this alpha all the way back, I think, to about alpha three, if you've been playing that long. Now, so you do have some control over these photos. So as you can see right now, some of these are have a little green tick underneath the eye and some of them have a little cross underneath the eye. And what this is all about is whether or not these things are shown publicly. So when something is shown publicly, that means it can pop up to be voted on in the loading screen when you're teleporting between worlds. So this actually is all the way back in Alpha 3. And I have a few photos from all the way back then. So let's take a look at this quick photo really quick so I can pop this up and have a look at this. This is my character from all the way back in Alpha 3. You can see not much has changed. Now I have a few options in here. I can either tweet this photo out to the world. I can make this photo public which means people can vote on it. Obviously this one hasn't been popped up for voting for any for some reason because it's got zero wins and zero losses. That there is all the result of voting. So as I said these photos get shown during the loading screen and when people click one way or the other you will get a win or a loss tallied up on your thing. You can also delete any photos just by clicking down in here. So we can remove this one from being public, but also I don't really want a photo of my character from that long ago. So we're just gonna do a quick delete on this. And as you can see, it's removed from there and the preview goes to the next photo up the list. So that is about it for these. We can of course go in and make something that is currently not public. Let's take a little cactus in the snow because a cactus in the snow is hilarious. And let's make this public again. It was obviously public at some point because it got three wins and eight losses on it. So obviously it wasn't doing so well last time I put it public. Let's see what happens this time around. Moving on down to the medals tab. So the medals tab is just directly under photos. In here, we can see a whole bunch of the medals that we have actually collected in the game. Now, there is a huge, huge number of these things, and the way you unlock them varies. Now, the one thing I will say for all of you completionists out there, you can't complete this set. And the only reason I say that is because right all the way at the bottom, there is one final one down here, which is the Radiant Worlds medal, and only employees of the game or of Radiant Worlds can actually get this medal. So I guess that's what I said is not true. You can complete this entire list of medals, but you also need to score yourself a job at Radiant Worlds. Uh, so happy job hunting, I guess. But this whole list of medals, these medals are things that pop up at random points during the game. Now, some of them you earn by doing interesting things. So stuff like the big game hunter, you defeat big cats to earn that medal. And once you've earned that medal, it will pop up like my Wolfsbane has here, and it is a number of enemies defeated medal. So the more wolves you kill, the higher your medal tally goes up. And as we can see right now, I'm sitting on Wolfsbane 10, and to get to Wolfsbane 11, I've killed 18 out of the 25 wolves that I need to kill to finish off this quest. So obviously, oh sorry, finish off this level of medal. It's not really a quest, it's kind of like a personal thing. The higher your medal rank goes, the fancier the outside of your medal gets. So when you start at medal one, 
uh, level one on metal you can see it's just kind of like a nice little shield with a nice little lapel down the bottom and then you kind of get a bronze thing going on they get some little spikes coming off of it and i don't have any metals higher than that right now but as you go higher and higher up through your metals they get fancier and fancier and i do believe actually the alpha tester down the bottom here is really really fancy and I think that's one of the higher tier levels of fancy. It may actually be its own level of fancy, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, Alpha Tester, I don't know why it's saying you can rank it up. It doesn't actually currently have anything that you can rank up. Um, so there are a few that can be bought from traders, although they used to be able to bought from, be bought from the weekend traders. I'm still yet to find them in any of the traders in the hub. I will update this video will put an annotation on the screen or something if I ever do find these medals. But some of them, like this Purifier one, could be bought or at least used to be bought and then could be ranked up after that point. Some medals like the Community Medal, which I currently don't have because I haven't been doing Community Quests, can be ranked up by continuously learning the same medal. And basically, you get that medal by completing Community Quests and they will give you more and more here we go. So, Community Champion and Community Spirit. So you get the Community Spirit by in joining in on a Community Quest, and the more times you learn that Community Quest medal over and over and over again, that will rank up your Community Spirit medal and push you higher and higher and higher, which means that if you do help out every single week with those Community Quests, you can have a huge level for your Community Spirit by the end of the Alpha. So yeah, like I said, some of these are all about uh, what you do to get them. Some of them are prizes like the community quest stuff. Some of them are literally just found in chests and in little places around the world. So there are some of them like the um, the book that was up here that just get found in certain places. Now, like I said before, some of these can't be ranked up because they're literally just a bought or a found medal, but some of them can be ranked up and those ones I personally like the best. Now, what you can do with these medals is put them on your profile, but we'll talk about that once we get down to the My Details section. Next on the list, we have Blueprints. Now, Blueprints are personally one of the best things about Sky Saga Alpha 8. And if you haven't seen it already, you really do need to go and check out my Blueprints tutorial because I go over these things in great detail. I give you everything, or at least everything I think, you need to know about blueprints to get yourself up and running and just do amazing, wonderful things with blueprints. So if I remember in editing, I will add a little annotation up in the right hand corner over here. You guys can click on that and go and check out that tutorial because I think that's a really good place to start for the Blueprint Studio. So anyway, Blueprint Studio, it's pretty simple. They basically act like new islands that you control. Now, you can get them from the Blueprint Trader and the Hub. Once again, for more information about that type of stuff, go check out that tutorial. Um, but the one thing I will mention is that it does appear as though for every two levels that you go up in Sky Saga, you get access to one more Blueprint Studio that you can hold in your Far Hauler. So right now, I have five Blueprint Studios that I can do, and I am a level 10 settler. So like I said, every two levels you go up, you're gonna get another one. At least that's what it looks like so far. I will update this video with more information if I ever do find a cap to the limit of Blueprint Studios that you can have. So yeah, the blueprints are pretty simple. Uh, the allowing friends to edit function, as far as I know, that is no law not implemented right now, and it, that button may not even supposed to exist there. It may just be a carryover from the fact that they're basically an island. Um, and of course, you can click these things to teleport your way into one of those things and modify it and do whatever you need to do to make it your own awesome blueprint stuff. And then we do have at the very bottom down here, my details. So this is how you set up your profile so that you can show yourself off to the world. So you've got a few different options here. We're gonna start from the top. We've got an overhead medal. So this is the thing that appears above your head as you're wandering around. And this is the thing that people are going to associate with you with all the time. It also gives you a title of some description. So whatever the title of the medal is, Wolf Spain, Bone Breaker, VIP, Settler, whatever, that's gonna pop up underneath your name in your tag, 
that appears above your head as you're kind of wandering around. And you will have seen people with these, like they are quite common because everybody has one once they've set this up. So the thing you can do, you can change your overhead metal to whatever you like. We can change ours to <laughs> barely lethal, which that's that's a lot. That's that's an awesome one. And you can also change the color of all of your metal stuff. So we can change that to be yellow, or we can change it to be orange, or we can change it to be green, whatever we like. I personally like the lime color, so I'm gonna leave mine just like that. Then of course you've got the profile medals. So these profile medals we saw earlier when we were looking at other people's profiles. These pop up, these are kind of like extra little bits of information that you can give somebody else. So you can kind of show off how cool you are at one thing and then you can use these three to kind of show off just that little bit more to somebody who's interested in your profile. And somebody kind of like sees you out in the world. If they click and hold E on you, they will have the profile pop up and they will see these cool things that you have done. The final thing is a little description box. Now, my little description box I have changed uh, for this video and it's probably gonna stay there. Last alpha description boxes did exist and I didn't really do anything with them. So I thought, why not let's put it on and show off the YouTube channel because we can. So then you've also got this view my profile. So this is what your profile will look like to somebody else coming in. So as you can see, it's got my name and my uh, barely lethal tag. It's also got my three medals. It shows off what I'm wearing and it shows off my points. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the little description down here. Um, so we can change that to be whatever we want it to be. Um, and it will pop up down here. I do think there is still a profanity filter on that. So uh, you can't really swear in that one. But yeah, there you go. It just gives people that little bit more information and it gives you a chance to express yourself or tell people to go and check out your public island or whatever it is that you want to do down in that bottom thing down there. So we've got one last tab to get onto, so let's do that one. So to help us finish this off and talk about the groups tab, I have invited Army Brat over here and Army Brat is going to help us out with this last little bit. Thank you very much for having me. hope everyone's doing well. Cool. Uh, so this last tab, like I said, is the groups tab. Now, if you come over here into the groups tab, it says you can only join one group at a time. And yeah, this is the tab where everything happens. Now, to get somebody into a group, as I mentioned earlier, you need to view their profile. So we're going to run up to Army Brat, we're going to open his profile up, and we're going to click invite to group when all of this stuff loads. There we go. So we've now invited Army Brat to join our group. I'm your brat. We'll get that invitation and accept it, hopefully. I'm already there. Awesome. So as soon as that group has been started and as soon as you see uh, an invitation get accepted, you'll see that on the right-hand side of the screen, you can now see my name and Army Brat's name pop up. Now, next to my name is a tiny little orange diamond. That means that I'm the leader of our group. So I'm the one that started the group, and everywhere I go from now on, Army Brat is going to follow me until such time as we break the group up. Now, we can also get a little bit more information in our group. We pull the far hauler back up again, go back into our groups tab, and you'll see in here that we can see me as the leader, and then we can see the other members of the group. Now, I believe that the group can be at maximum six people, so that's one leader and five followers. And so the two main advantages this does give you is you can see on the right hand side the people who are here and in your group and who are going to be following you everywhere. And then of course the main advantage to this is having people follow you everywhere. Now this follow is for any time you teleport. So anytime you use the far, far hailer to get anywhere, so that be that into PvP, be that to the hub, be that into a build off or going into a mastery or a dungeon. If you're in part of a group and you are the leader, your group is going to follow you. So we're just going to quickly do this by jumping to the hub and we'll see Army Brat there because he's going to be dragged along for the ride. Whether I like it or not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. I've got the countdown. Uh, it's a 30 second countdown, but you can press J to actually follow them straight away if you wish. Cool. So you've now pressed G to follow me. And yep, there you are. Awesome. So you're just saying that that's a, a countdown. So you get a little pop up that tells you that the leader has left and that there's going to, they're going to teleport you out in 
30 seconds, was it? Yep, 30 second countdown, or you can press the letter J to get there straight away. Perfect. So that, I think, personally, is one of the coolest new additions to the Fire Halo, because it means that you can set something up like we've done here, and you can just do things together without ever having to worry about kind of missing each other or not going to the same world or jumping into different adventures or anything like that. You can just have one leader set up and everyone will go where they go, which is really cool for, yeah, like I said, doing some adventures, doing a dungeon, touring other people's islands, all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, I, personally, I would say if you don't have uh, people you can do a group with, ask around, ask in the forums, because this community is awesome and people always love to come along, help out, run adventures, go and do build-offs, do PvP, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think everybody should uh, be joining groups as often as they possibly can. So uh, thank you, Army Rat. That was great. Thanks for helping show off this cool piece of, well, cool new piece of Sky Saga tech. No problem at all. Thank you very much for inviting me. Cool. And uh, I, Army Brat does uh, do some stuff on Sky Saga as well, so I'm going to leave all of his details in the description box below. So if you want to see more of Army Brat, just go down there and check all of his stuff out. Anyway, thanks again, man. And there you have it. That is absolutely everything that you can do with this awesome new Far Hailer in Sky Saga Alpha 8. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next episode!